Rim sign shooting, all is well? And all is in divine order. I just love this time of year. It's just something about what's in the air. It's Lent season in preparation of the reparation of the resurrection. Can we say that together? Preparation for the reparation of the resurrection. Let's try that again. This time be hooked on phonics and go with it. <laughs> preparation for the reparation of the resurrection. Reparation is a payment. Everything you've gone through, it was supposed to happen. Do you know that? All things are working. Huh? All things are working together. You're good. And so when you go through the troubled times, it's kind of like go through it. Pass through it. You'll get double for your trouble. You get poured out a blessing so huge, so large that you can't receive it. So why don't you just stand for a moment with me? You knew you were going to have to stand. But I get excited when I hear that I'll give you life and give it to you more abundantly, more prosperously. That gets me excited. And so you can tell that when I go through the Lent season and sacrifice, I'm expecting double for my trouble. I don't know about you, but if I'm sacrificing stuff, if I'm being disciplined, I want something for my trouble. So at least give me double for my trouble. Can we say that, double for my trouble? All right, so I want to do this affirmation, but before I do this affirmation, I want to test you out. Can you just repeat after me? Involution, evolution, release, and renewal. One more time. Involution, evolution, release, renewal. Now, say this affirmation with me. But say it in my style. Can you do it my way? Can I have my way for a couple moments? All right. So just, just repeat after me. Now. Right now. I ignite the fire and power within my soul. I am on a journey of generation, degeneration, and regeneration. I release all, I, release all. I, surrender all I surrender all that will not, that will not. Let, me let me be my, be my highest, highest and, very and very best self. self. I, am on the path I am on the path of spiritual, of spiritual renewal, renewal and awakening. And awakening. I'm, awoke. I'm awoke. Now, now. I, affirm I affirm my readiness to embrace the transformative power of resurrection, igniting my soul with wisdom that is the light of everlasting renewal. You may be seated. Raise your hand if you need some oxygen. I'm excited today. For various reasons, I'm excited. I know the next week is Palm Sunday. Y'all know that, right? Holy Week, Good Friday, and then that following Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And there's a lot of things that happen from now until that Resurrection Sunday. We know this, right? And all these days in between, Leading up to Good Friday, 
are predicated on a necessity because, 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 because. Way back when, and even now, it's been so very hard, very, very hard. How hard? Very, very. Can we just say very, very and shake our hands like we know it's very, very hard? It's very, very hard for us to walk a straight line, walk a straight path with clear directions in hand. In a good book, all the instructions, the manual for life and how to walk a straight line, we find it difficult, near impossible to walk a straight line. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Directions in hand. You've heard the word, the message, time and time again, but we find it hard, difficult to walk a straight line. Can I get a witness? We do. We make decisions. We make these choices that take us on detours. And sometimes they lead us to places that require us to make a U-turn. Or we end up on a dead end street. Anybody ever had to make a U-turn in life? Anybody went down the street and found it was a dead end? But the entryway looks so inviting, so tempting, so contemporary that we went down that street. And we found out it was a one-way street. And it was a dead end street. Anybody familiar with those kind of life situations that we find ourselves in? And the stress, the strain, the frustration of being on the wrong road, the wrong path. Raise your hand if you've ever been on the wrong road or wrong path. Do we have anybody perfect? Now, everybody put your hand down. We're all imperfect people to some degree, perfectly imperfect. But there is this period of our life, these stages to life, involution, evolution, generation, degeneration, regeneration. Evolution. Inside of us, what's going on? Can everybody say what's going on? Inside of me. Evolution. What's happening in the different days of my life? Evolution, evolution, and then we come to generation. What is generation? I'm up here this morning having you repeat something, and I haven't explained it yet. How dare me? Generation, degeneration, regeneration. Why don't y'all ask me, what is generation? What's generation? Generation is God, Christ's creation. And we know that when God makes it, it's all good. It's perfectly perfected with everything necessary. Can we say everything included in the box? No tools, assembly required. It's all good. On arrival, generation, God, Christ, creation, all is good. All is well. Degeneration. Can we say degeneration? Degeneration, human alignment creation, materialistic, the relationships, the things outside of that spiritual bond with the Christ, God, those things that pull us, that trap us, put us on the dead end street. And we get to feel like, I don't feel so well. So we go on from generation, I feel well, to degeneration, I don't feel so well, to regeneration, 
Christ's spirit awareness and alignment back to the creator. This vicious circle, do you see it? I go from being generated to degenerated to regenerated, trying to get back to where I started from. And I can't just hit reset and go back to the original state without doing a lot of work. So that regeneration means I got to get well again. So in that phase, we see I'm well. I don't feel so well. I got to get well again. You got it? And so we move ahead. In this Lent season, the Bible explains to us that our brother, the master teacher Jesus, is going through a process of generation, degeneration, and regeneration. And it's not that he caused this, but he knew he was on assignment. And so you remember what we talked about last week. We talked about a garden and Jesus having a garden talk with God. And he came to the point where he realized, not my will, but thy will be done. We got that? Not my will, but thy will be done. And he realizes that some of the things along the journey are not going to be so well because he knew he came equipped with everything necessary to overcome any human obstacles, challenges, experiences. He knew this. But he had to follow the program because he was on assignment. And the assignment was to be the greatest role model ever. But he wanted to be able to position everybody to say, the things that I do, you can do them and greater things. And I think we get a little sneak peek into his mindset if we were to look at John 10, verse 17 to 18. And it says, I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Do we know what that means? Let's spend a little time on it. Can we do it? spend a little bit of time on this? Don't miss this. Lean in on this. Take notes, all right? Because this is important. If you get this understanding, you'll understand that when Reverend Wilma and Reverend Adam talk about the power that you possess and putting that power to a purpose and moving forward, it won't be a problem. Guaranteed. So can I guarantee that if you get the rest of this message, you're going to be getting some good stuff for the rest of your life. So can we say good stuff? God's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Now, John 10, 17 through 18, if we were to really examine this steward, we would see that God has an attitude here. He has an attitude. He's being defiant, Steve. He's saying, I lay down my life. And he said it with an attitude. You see that? There's an attitude in that first statement. I laid down my life only to take it up again. You ain't getting it yet. I know you're not. Because it's always got to be the totality of the situation. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. What does accord mean? Yeah, my own power, my terms and conditions. I'm in control of this life. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm grown. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm grown. I'm a grown man. He can't tell me what to do. Sharnice, care if you woman of the week. <laughs> Dr. Hicks, I don't care if you woman of the year. He can't tell me what to do. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again if I want to. You hear what I'm saying? He's saying. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again if I want to. It's my party. And I'll cry if I want to. That's old school. Y'all, oh, if y'all remember that, because that used to come on um, that channel in Canada. 
Uh huh. CKLW. <laughs> I won't sing it. <laughs> but but there's three things here that we need to extract from here that he's talking about. Self mastery. In the eye, I lay down my life when I want to, if I want to, and if I decide to lay it down, I can pick it back up whenever I want to. I'm just that power possessed. I'm made like that. From the original creation of me, I had it all in place. And so spiritual mastery is the first thing. Conscious surrender to divine will. Remember he said, not by my will, but thy will be done. And so there's some occasions where I may put aside, lay aside what I want for the good of the bigger mission. And so we see that there. And then the third one is the power of resurrection and renewal. If I pick it back up, I'm renewed. I'm resurrected. Do you see that? Put that back up there. Put that back up there. They got to get this. You see, I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. And when I take it up again, I'm renewed. I'm resurrected. Can we say renewed? Resurrected. Which means I can go higher. Now, Jesus is in this mindset, this stubborn mindset. But why? What gives him the basis to have this kind of stubborn mindset, this kind of intentionality in his life? To know himself like that. Well, I think it's the emphatic proclamation of God. Can we say that? Emphatic proclamation of God. What is that? Huh? The emphatic proclamation of God. Well, see, the word emphatic means I insist. Can we say I insist? You ever insist upon something? Being the way that you want it to be? I insist. I insist my burger has pickles and cheese. I insist when you come in my house, you take off your shoes. It's some things that we insist. But in this case, emphatic means I insist. I must have. I know. Proclamation is a decree, an announcement to what I can do for you. And Jesus knows that God has an emphatic proclamation. And so he got that from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. He says, nevertheless, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But then it goes on to say, nevertheless, I will bring you health and healing. And so it's the nevertheless that gets me. Nevertheless, Means whatever you're going through, no matter what you want to do, I got you. Huh? Do we get this? Whatever you want to do, whatever you're going through, I got you. And so God is saying, if you have the spiritual understanding, whatever the problem you experience, whatever the pain you experience, whatever the complexity of the problems and the pain that you persistently Find yourself in, I got you. Let's walk through it. We still need a little bit more on that, Reverend Morgan. And so we need to connect it. It's kind of like connect the dots. We connect the dots by saying Jesus has this attitude, this approach, this mindset towards living. I don't have to give you anything. If I lay my life down, I can pick it back up at any time. And this is a persistent mindset that he pursues life with. And we see the evidence of this as we move to the cross. So if we were to meet up with Jesus again in the cross situation, we find him at that cross, but having been through a bogus trial where the Roman government, trying to silence him, found him guilty. Of what crime? No crime. To the point where they said, well, let's just have the people vote on it. Do you want Barabbas' life spared or Jesus' life spared? And they picked the common criminal to save. What's up with that? Come on now. This is one of those things that make me say, come on, man. Come on. 
you've been walking with this guy, seeing what he's doing. You find him guilty. And there he is, walking up, Golgotha's heel, with this heavy cross on his back, bloody, beaten, skin, torn apart. Then they put him on the cross. And to add insult to the injuries that he suffered, he's hanging on the cross next to two common thieves. Common thieves. There's Jesus in the middle, hanging there with him. His mindset is still, I lay down my life. And I'm the only one that can give my life away. But there he is, on the cross. He's dealing with the emotional pain of having been deserted by his disciples, let down by his followers, seeing his mother watching him go through this crucifixion. Can you imagine being a mother or father and watching your son being crucified? Body being torn apart, people making fun of him. And all you know is that he was on assignment to do good. But there he is on the cross. At this point, he's taken 12 hours of being beaten. 12 hours. Can you imagine the intensity of being beaten for 12 hours? It's like a bad boxing match. It's out of hand. But there he is, 12 hours later, and his mind at this point is starting to drift away. He's thinking about all kinds of things, but then he remembers the conversation that he had in the garden where he committed to finishing the mission. Not my will, thy will be done. And so by this time, all of his bodily functions are not working properly. His mind is not working properly. All he can think about is I made a promise, a commitment. And so he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Can we say that? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He doesn't have the strength to muster many more words at all. His head at this point is bowed down. But then we notice that he utters a couple of words. In addition to that, he says, I commit my spirit. Jesus says, it is finished. But Jesus didn't say, I am finished. You notice the difference? There is a difference. Jesus says, it is finished. But he didn't say, I am finished. So he's saying the mission is finished. I've healed the sick. I've healed the lame. I've fed the hungry. I've consoled those with affliction. I've done it all. So my assignment is completed. But I'm not done. And so he says, I commit my spirit. And so I, I think we need to understand where that comes from. Because it comes from Psalms 31.5 where you see in Psalms 31.5, it says, Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Now, if you understand, and you do some research on that, you'd understand that that comes from a bedtime prayer that mothers teach kids. It's kind of like when I was coming up, and probably you, you know your bedtime prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord. If I die, I pray the Lord. And so that's where it comes from. So he's on the cross being defiant still with the mindset, nobody takes my life. If I choose to lay it down, I can pick it up again. And so my body may shut down, but I'm going to be resurrected again. And now he's saying on the cross, I know I'm not saying it's over. It's finished. Because I'm telling you, this is a nighttime prayer, I'm getting ready to go to sleep. That's all I'm doing is getting ready to go to sleep. And with that, I'm telling you, all I'm saying is good night. Good night. 
I'm getting ready to get a good nice sleep, a couple days sleep, and wake me up in three days, as a matter of fact. And when you wake me up, I'm going to be resurrected. I'm going to be renewed. I'm going to be revived. I'm going to be ready for the world. And when I wake up this time, I'm going to know it all. And I'm coming from experience that we can make it through any problem. We have the provision to get through. So we go through this process. And all it is, we have to know constantly. Generation, degeneration, and regeneration. And as we approach Resurrection Sunday, you need to be excited like I am when I say, I'm going through the process. I'm releasing, I'm letting go of anything that no longer serves my greater good, my elevation, my higher consciousness. We'll get there. And we'll be able to say, nobody takes my life. Nobody has the right, the power, the authority to make me less than I am. Because I am powerful. I am one with the Christ. I have everything I need to succeed. May we say a quick affirmation? Just repeat after me. You can be seated. But say it Reverend Glenn style again. You know how I like to do that. You ready? Now! Now! I declare with unwavering faith I lay down my life and I take it up again. No force can take my life from me. For I I possess the authority to surrender and rise anew. This divine power flows through me forever and always. I boldly claim I seize the victory of resurrection in my life. I am empowered, renewed, and abundantly blessed and highly favored. And so it is. Renaissance Junior, I love you. Thanks for having me this morning. God bless each and every one of you.